Council will hold a special meeting tonight to vote on whether to give nearly $350,000 to fix drainage problems at Dickey mm. Stevens Park. Our Victoria Price is live this morning with more on what, if approved, that money will go to fix. Victoria? Hey, good morning, guys. So remember those sinkholes that formed here at Dickey Stevens on the field earlier this month? Well, unfortunately, they are still here. But if the city council approves that money tonight, it'll go to buying a new drainage system for the park that should hopefully ensure that sinkholes like this never happen again. Now, it was the old drainage system that was causing the sinkholes back when the river flooded a few weeks ago. Uh, the city already had about $160,000 set aside for park repairs, but apparently the new system is going to cost quite a bit more, like you said, around $350,000. So that additional money would come from the city's general fund if approved by the city council tonight. So while this is not the first time sinkholes like this have popped up in the park, the travelers say it should be the last and are hopeful that the city will approve those funds. We have all the faith in the world that everything will be taken care of by the city of North Little Rock. Give them a whole bunch of money to fix this. Opening day at Dickey Stevens is on April 7th, and right now the team says it has no concerns about the sinkholes interfering with that. And from what I'm told right now, it's looking fairly likely that the city council will approve that $350,000 in appropriations when they meet tonight. Live in North Little Rock, I'm Victoria Price for Fox 16 Good Day. Pat and Suzanne? Victoria, thank you for that report. A man accused in the death of his girlfriend's one-year-old son will be in court this morning for a plea and arraignment. Brian Raven is facing capital murder charges after the boy was found not breathing in a lone oak home. Police say Raven told them he had been wrestling with a child. Two other children were also inside the home at the time. Both are now in DHS custody. And a woman facing, uh, also expected in court, facing charges in the death of her nephew. Kane Brevard is charged with manslaughter. Little Rock police say her six-year-old nephew accidentally shot himself after finding a gun in her car. The boy died from injuries. Well, two men still on the run after Sherwood police say they stole a woman's car at a car wash over the weekend. Now take a look at this surveillance video. The woman was vacuuming her car when a black car pulls up next to her. Then two men get out while she is hanging up her vacuum and one man runs behind the car and hops into the driver's seat and takes off. Those guys weren't very smart because they backed up into a spot where we had three cameras, you know, focused on them. Sherwood police with the help of LRPD and state police located the car by pinging the woman's iPhone, but they're still looking for the man who stole it. The police are warning you to not leave your cars alone if you plan to warm them up on cold mornings like this because it makes them an easy target for thieves. Two vehicles were stolen from driveways Monday morning. One of the cases happening just before 730 in a neighborhood off Chico Road in southwest Little Rock. Now, police say thieves are especially active on cold mornings. Police identify the third suspect involved in a robbery that led to a police officer being shot. He's 17-year-old Joshua Williams. Police shot him in during an attempted robbery at Red Lobster on Markham in Little Rock January 9th. He was released from the hospital yesterday and transferred to jail. LRPD officer Sean Baker was also shot during the incident and is okay. Two other suspects, Troy Williams Jr. and Kenneth Nelson, face several charges in the attempted robbery and shooting. Well, the former Chief Justice for the Arkansas Supreme Court will be laid to rest today. Jim Hanna's funeral will be held at First Presbyterian Church in Searcy at 2.30. An Arkansas man is taking an extra step to learn about the needs of the homeless community by going homeless himself for 30 days. Fred Teague runs the Russ Bus in Russellville. It's an organization that helps the homeless and the needy. He's living homeless to find out a better way to serve the community. Now he says he's learned more than he ever expected and encountered situations he'd never even considered. The other day I came home after work and I got here late after the food delivery and my food was gone because an animal had got it. Teague still has about two weeks left on his 30-day journey.